The flop is 8-9 queen. Two clubs. He's got two clubs in his hand. I have to fade a club. I have no back doors, so basically he's free rolling me. The dealer, of course, to rub it in, puts the river card face down. And slowly peels it and... Hey guys, what's up? It's Absolute Nuts. I think uh, our villain in his house. Cal one no. Cal. Um, and then we have a new player I think coming. So. And a possible wild card. So let's go. Looking let's go to the casino, to bro. It. So, like, uh, man, I am. I'm excited today to play some poker. Maybe we play some blackjack. Up. You wanna play blackjack? Ooh, that would spice a little things up. Maybe a little craps. Yeah, know? a little craps. We're in Vegas, man. I mean, it's Friday. We've been working right. super it's hard. The weekend. Yeah, it's a weekend. I work super hard, he works super hard, every fucking body works super hard. Hopefully I kill you. Hopefully I take 5k from him so I can buy another sweater. That apparently, this sweater is the least favorite of him. I mean guys, so. come on, seriously. Let's get a close up of this sweater. <laughs> it is pre-ripped, not once, not twice. <laughs> Everywhere! You know, you know, paid full price! You know you what I said? You didn't get a discount you know, on it. You know what I said when, when no I bought discount? it? When I bought it, I, and they give me the price, X, I was like, bravo. You guys deserve it. You guys deserve it, you know? You guys save money yeah. and I pay full price. Hopefully we have a good game. We're going to play probably five hours here. Then we drive super fast to Tilden Gate. Late night Gate. action. Yeah, it's super get fun. Get there, it's a lot of fun. It's super fun. Good uh, music. Good yeah, ambience. good music, good ambience. Absolutely. Limits very low. You guys can have fun. By the way, we haven't get paid by this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Tropicana. Let's have a great game. We have Jonathan here in the camera. Megan Zero. The villain, Cal. A special guest, Andrew Nimi. The pharmacist, Buffalo enthusiast, AJ. Big Bree that my wife keeps thinking that it's a girl. <laughs> uh, and we have Lorenzo. Yeah, 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 who's this breed that is texting me? Okay, guys, let's see what's up. Hey, what's up, guys? This is AJ, the pharmacist. So, on this hand, I am in the small blind, and we are playing the small blind game. What is the small blind game? It is a game that creates tons of action, especially when there is a lot of money on the dealer button. It is because every time the small blind player doesn't win, the next button player will have to put $15 on top of the dealer button. So, as long as the players prevent the small blind player from winning the hand, the money on the dealer button will pile up, and eventually, there will be hundreds to thousands of dollars on top of it then the player on the small blind will have no choice but have to shove pretty much any hand to win that extra money and other players will have to call in order to defend the money and get a chance to get it the action starts on Jonathan who raises $55 with his beautiful ace 8 offsuit. Megan calls, Cal calls, David who I don't know what the hell is he doing seeing that there are million callers in front of him decides to fold. Andrew Nimi who wants to defend the money on the button also decides to call $55. Then me with the beautiful king 7 of diamonds also known as Kevin because the cards are a king and a 7 decides to call 55 as well. Bree on the big blind thought for a little bit if he should call or not but I talked him into calling because I want more people in the pot in case I win it. The flop comes king 4 5 2 spades. Here we have top pair not so good kicker so we decide to check. Bree checks, Jonathan checks, Megan checks and Cal being the villain who likes to steal pots and bluff people decides to bet $180. Having top pair here guys is pretty much the nuts so we decide to call. Bree also calls but Megan and Jonathan fold. The turn is a three of clubs. I check, Bree checks, and surprisingly, Cal checks back. The river is the ten of hearts. So here guys, we want Cal, the villain, to bluff, so we decide to check one more time. Bree also checks, and Cal, to the rescue, in stealing pots, decides to bet 630. It's a pretty big bet guys, and if we are wrong, we look like a fish. But I thought about it, and eventually decided to call. Bree didn't insta-fold, and he talked for a while. Now, I became nervous, because from the very start of the hand, I thought that he was on a flush draw, and now he's contemplating on a call. Oh my god, at this point, I think he has a better king than mine. Mine, so I was hoping that he would fall. In the end, after thinking for about 2-3 to three minutes, he decided to call. Cal shows queen 9 for a bluff and I show king 7 for top pair and Bree, to my surprise, shows king 8 for a better king. So guys, he beat us by 1 and that sucks. So our suspicion was right and we lost a big pot guys. It's a sad day for team AJ. 
once again, we are in the small blind and everybody folded to David on the cutoff and he raises to $20. The super pro Andrew Nimi decides to 3-bet him to $110 and me next to Andrew, I look at, at the beautiful Ace 5 of Hearts. Andrew is one of my favorite vloggers. So what do you do with your favorite people? If you said we 4-bet them, then you are 100% correct. So I decided to 4-bet him to $400. David folds and the action goes back to Andrew. He thought for a little bit and decided to go all in. At this point guys, I was going to fold but you know, we like Andrew, he's a good guy, we want him to come back so why not give him action. I asked Andrew if he wants action or not and he obligingly says yes. So we insta call the rest of our stack not because we have a good hand but because we want to give money to our favorite vlogger. He asked me to pick how many runouts so I said twice. First board was a king high board and his pocket queens held up. The second run out was a full house with three sevens and two fours. But he has sevens full of queens so he still had the better hand avoiding the chop on that run out. We torched our stack and decided to buy in for more. But everything is alright. We are giving action and that's fitting for the absolute nuts game. All right, guys and girls, it's Jonathan with Absolute Nuts. I am in a hand that I would like to share with you against the legendary Andrew Nimi. I am in the small blind here. I look down and see one of my favorite hands, although I would have liked it to be suited, but cannot complain. I pick up Ace-King offsuit. Cal, who likes to play a very wide range of hands, decides to raise it in the under the gun position to $30. Andrew Nimi quickly calls behind and has folded over over to me and I definitely want to put some money in the pot although I would have liked to be in position with ace king beggars can't be choosers I decide to raise it to 160 ideally I would have liked to be heads up playing with ace king out of position but you know three ways isn't too bad and you'll see that super villain Cal here decides to go along for the ride as does Andrew Nimi. So I'm actually feeling pretty good that I didn't get four bet here, but their ranges are pretty wide. We're playing the stand-up game. I still need a button to sit down. Andrew Nimi needs a button to sit down. And the flop comes at first glance, something really nice. King high flop. Although when you look at this a little bit more carefully, may not necessarily be that good. Uh, we have a king queen, seven, two hearts. So heart draws, straight draws, even two pair king queen that may not have uh, raised me pre-flop after I made it 160 are all possibilities. Jack 10, ace high flush draws, combo draws. This is actually a pretty dangerous flop for me. And I thought, you know, I'm out of position. They already know that I three bet pre-flop. So this board likely hit me. So I doubt unless they have a very, very strong hand or super strong draw or combo draw, they're probably gonna check back behind. And as you see, I check, Cal checks, and Andrew Nimi also checks. And we see a two of clubs on the turn. Now this is definitely a safe card, doesn't open any any new draws, doesn't complete any straights. So I decide to bet about 30% pot. Cal thinks for a little bit and folds. And I'm looking for calls from like maybe King Jack, King 10, Queen Jack, Queen 10, maybe even a Jack 10, and Andrew Nimi calls. So I'm thinking, you know what? Andrew Nimi probably just doesn't believe I have a King. Maybe he thinks I have pocket 10s, pocket Jacks. He could have a flush draw here. Although I think some of the time he might have bet a flush draw, especially if it's an ace high flush draw or if he has Jack nine of hearts, especially Jack 10 of hearts, uh, but he elects to just call here. The river is a card I did not really want to see a five of hearts. Fortunately, it does not complete any straights. It definitely completes a flush, obviously. So I still elected to bet here on the river, wanting a call from obviously worse hands. And I'm thinking, you know, if I get raised here, I could probably get away from it. I bet about 40% pot. Andrew Nimi thinks for not too long. And unfortunately he says the dreaded words all in and he rips it. Puts me all in, he has me covered. And here, I just don't really have a choice here but to fold. I mean, for a brief moment, I thought about calling, but I don't know what I beat here. He even could have slow played pocket sevens, although I probably would have heard from him on the turn. But I really think he hit his flush, maybe like a baby flush, and I fold. And since it's a stand-up game fortune, I get to see his hand, and he had deuce three of hearts. He picked up a pair on the turn, already had the flush draw on the flop. He elected to take the free card on the flop, elected to just flat call the turn, which is probably a good move because he knows I did three bet pre-flop and that flop probably hit 
hit me pretty hard. And of course he hits the river, tries to get paid on the river, but I think I did lose the minimum there. So I'm pretty happy with my play there. What do you think guys? Okay guys, this next hand, oh my gosh. I think I was thinking about this hand for like three days. I don't even know why it wasn't even for that much money, but I think it was the fact that I've been bleeding chips all night and it was against the super villain cow with his stupid ass t-shirts of Marvel comics and he just wishes he was uh, some Marvel hero when he's really just a super villain. I'm just fed up and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna do something stupid. I only have a thousand dollars in front of me. These guys are just calling with anything, floating, bluffing, and I, I just wanna go all in just to either double up or just go home crying. And so there's a straddle, double straddle, and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm just gonna blind raise. And so I kind of put up some shenanigans. I, I made up some act like I'm gonna like feel the cards and pretend I can tell how much the card weighs. And basically, long story short, I raise blind $100 and super villain Cal is on the button. And I'm thinking, you know what? There's like a 40% chance, maybe 50% chance Cal is gonna raise me just because he has position. He has the button. If he has any ace, maybe any king, suited Broadway cards, offsuit Broadway cards, maybe even suited connectors, and any pocket pair. And so his, his range is super wide right now. And David folds, Andrew Nimi folds, AJ folds, Bree folds, everybody folds, and it's back over to me. And I'm thinking, should I just shove here or not? And I'm already thinking in my mind, what I'm probably gonna do is just call and then shove flop no matter what. Probably as long as there's no ace. Uh, although, you know what? Because Cal's range is so wide, I would probably, shove anyways with an ace out there. I also know I probably have very little fold equity pre-flop because he's already put in $300. If I go all in, it's a thousand bucks. So it's only $700 more for him to call, uh, which means there's $1,300 in the pot and he's pretty much getting two to one odds. And there are very few cards or hand holdings that he would actually fold there. And so I just don't think it's worth anything to just shove pre-flop. And so I'm looking down and I look at king, queen of hearts, suited. Definitely a good hand, especially in a blind raise. And now I have a decision. I, I don't know if I should shove or if I should stick with my original plan to call and probably shove the flop. I'm kind of second guessing myself. Maybe he isn't that wide of a range and maybe he's really just doing this with pocket pairs, aces, any ace combination, maybe strong kings. So I just call. The flop is nine, seven, four, rainbow, although there's a heart. So I have two overs and a backdoor heart draw. I have a pretty strong hand here, especially heads up. And I go ahead with my original plan and I just go all in. I think, you know what? There's a pretty decent chance I'm ahead and I can make an ace high fold that missed any pair, except for maybe ace king, ace queen, but I block a king and a queen. If he has an ace high, he's got like ace rag or something. As long as he doesn't hit a seven, nine or four, he's gonna fold. So I shove, he snap called me. I'm like, damn, he actually has a hand. He's got like pocket tens, jacks, whatever. No, he tables ace, deuce, off suit. And I'm just thinking, what the hell? And I can't tell if that was, that was genius or he's just punting. We've been playing with this guy for several months now. And at first we just thought he was the biggest freaking fish ever, but he kind of knows what he's doing. He switches it up so much. It's hard to figure out what he's gonna do or what the right move is. So I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Obviously I'm not folding king queen suited there. I just don't know if I should have shoved on the flop. If I should have just did exactly what I did or maybe I just check and then wait for a turn. I don't know. You guys let me know. Absolute no. That's the game that we're dealing with here. So I lost another thousand bucks. Rebot, next hand. Let's go. Okay, let me tell you about this hand right here. I literally cannot get away from this player. Super villain Cal with a stupid Punisher t-shirt. I sound like I'm irritated, I'm annoyed because I literally just can't get away from this guy. He's in every single pot I'm at. I'm bleeding chips. I'm probably like on my last buy-in here or in my mind, I'm on my last buy-in, but I always end up buying some more. But I'm running bad. Cal is running great. And what do you know? I get involved in another hand with Cal and let me walk you through it. I'm looking down in the low jack with ace king. Not suited, but they're still pretty. Once again, one of my favorite hands. And what happens? Cal is in the hand with me and he repops it to $300. And David does the shenanigans, talking, 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 playing low hand. Everything has to be about him. He hems and haws, decides to play the low hand. Everyone else basically folds over to me. Now, Cal has just been really aggressive, splashy, three betting, I think at least half of the times that I am opening with a race. And I'm thinking my ace king about 90% of the time is way ahead, if not crushing whatever he has. Like he could have king 
king, queen, king, jack, ace, jack, ace, queen. I'm blocking an ace and a king, so it is that much less likely that he has aces and kings. And even if he has queens, jacks, tens, whatever, we're still flipping. I decide, you know what? I'm gonna repop it to uh, $1,000, and he immediately shit snap shoves. And I'm like, really? Again, me and him? He puts me all in. Basically, effectively, I'm all in for about $2,000, and he flips over ace, king. So I'm thinking, all right, I guess we're gonna chop. Ignore that two deuce four. The flop is eight, nine, queen. Two clubs, he's got two clubs in his hand. I have to fade a club. I have no back doors, so basically he's free rolling me. The dealer, of course, to rub it in, puts the river card face down and slowly peels it and... Thank goodness. It's not a club. And literally I chopped the pot and I feel like I just won like a 10K pot. That's how bad I was running. Just my morale has been crushed. I, I don't know what to do. I get good hands, I don't win. I play well, I don't win. I'm bleeding chips. Maybe I'm playing bad, I don't know. What do you guys think? Am I just being unlucky? Absolute nuts. That's what this game is all about. Next hand. Hey everyone, this is Megan, aka Vixen, aka Absolute Nuts Super Pro here. And this hand's a fun one. It starts off with an under the gun straddle to 20, and then a re straddle to 50 from Cal in the cutoff. David folds, Andrew folds, AJ folds, Bree makes the call, Jesus folds, and then is on Jonathan now with the ace, four of hearts. So he raises up his suited ace to 250, and then that's when we look down at the beautiful seven deuce offsuit. Now, in this game, whenever you win with seven deuce, everyone has to pay you $50. And when I look down at seven deuce, I like to treat it like it's aces. So what would I do if I had aces? I would raise it up. So I do that in this case, I raise it up to 725. And now I have a habit of three betting Jonathan all the time because playing with him over the past year now, and you guys already know by seeing him play as well, he opens almost any two cards. If he's going to play a hand, he's going to raise it. But he can also get away from these hands after he's raised and he gets caught. He's okay with letting them go, which is why I feel comfortable three betting him to this size. Now, Bree ends up folding, and then it's back on Jonathan. And in this position, I don't envy his spot at all. Playing weak aces like that out of position is really hard because you hit an ace, and then you don't even know if you're good anymore. I think in this spot as well, he would much prefer to have something like 6-7 suited because he at least he knows if he hits any of those, he actually has good clean outs. Versus when I 3-bet, I probably have all the ace-kings, ace-queen, aces-kings, queens, all of that. So he says even in this hand that he's like, oh god, guys, she has 7-deuce. I do. In this hand, it's funny because I look over at him and I give him kisses, like needling him a little bit, hoping he folds. You know, maybe the kisses are just going to make him fold. Who knows? But in this spot, he does. And we take it down pre-flop. We get $50 from every player. We get the 50 from Cal, from Bree, and the 250 from Jonathan. Alrighty guys, in this hand, we look down at pocket eights on the button and we raise it up to $100 person who calls is Andrew Nimi. And the flop comes favorable, as Andrew Nimi would say. It is seven, eight king, two spades. He checks, I bet a hundred, and he check raises me to a little over 300. Now, in this hand, there's many things I could just do. I could just call and maybe keep his bluffs in. If he is, maybe send my bluffing with a flush draw or something like that. Or I can get more value if he has something like king eight, king seven, and other combo draws of such that would still pay off a raise. And three betting on the flop is rare but i do it i three bet him to 900 and he makes the call and on the turn it comes the seven of clubs here so i bowed up on the turn he checks and maybe i can check this one back sometimes maybe let him catch up get there with his flush draws or stuff like that but in this hand i get a little greedy i shove all in and he folds yeah it was a fun one it was fun to get involved with andrew nimi there but we take this one down there is a problem here. Megan is winning way too much. Completely crushing the game. Continuous happening. She bought in for that yellow chip. Megan, can you show me that yellow chip? Oh. That's what she bought in for again. She has like one, two, three, almost $4,000 in profit. Jonathan is acting like he that plays bad and he's coaching her and taking our money. And this is not good. So what do you think about this, bro? It's just like, ah, la familia, la familia. So Jonathan, uh, I am keeping up with you. How much do you love? So I'm in for 5,000. 32, 34, 36, 36, 70. So I'm down 1330. I lost 1330. You almost lost 5K. Yeah. I was free rolling you. I know. Oh my gosh. I think this is this is practically a win tonight, guys. Cal is down about 2500. Megan? Me Megan has another winning session. This is, this is how much she bought oh, it for. Oh, before the flip. Uh, no, I went 27. Why do you seem sad? 
that. Because you have the flip and then it, blah, blah, blah. Because she didn't win 7,000 like last time. Three, uh, winning again? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, of course. Oh you my win. god. 23? So wow. 2,300 bucks. It's not a bad good hours for him. So I put in for 5K. Somehow I'm up one, up. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, That's ten. Right. Yes! A thousand dollars. Nice. God, God exists. Poker gods exist. Oh my god. Now of course. I'm so <laughs> fucked. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, Andrew, yeah, Mimi, okay. uh, every, one of the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think about the game, bro? Good game, fun game. Good people, fun times. Awesome. So it's tough to find like a really fun game like this in Vegas. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Well, thank you, man. Thank you for coming. It's a wonderful surprise. <laughs> cool to have uh, Andrew Mimi with us today. Yeah, that was awesome. Always welcome, I guess. <laughs>